In today's ProCreate tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can transform your art into mesmerizing patterns that can repeat endlessly, perfect for wallpapers, textiles, packaging, or even your digital background. If you are looking for an easy way to unlock this creative superpower, then this video is for you. You will learn all the secrets to ensure your patterns are not just beautiful, but flawlessly seamless too. We're going to start with a new canvas and in order to create your pattern, you want to have a square canvas. The default 2048 by 2048 pixel canvas is perfect for this. We're going to create this really cute fruit pattern. And in order to do that, we are going to paint the individual pieces of fruit in a watercolor style first. This is probably going to take the longest out of the whole video. So if you just want to know how to make the pattern, you might like to jump to the pattern making section a bit further back in the video. But if you'd like to learn an easy watercolor painting technique, then you want to watch this section too. I'm going to use my IPL fruit painting brushes for this because it contains a variety of pre-made fruit stamp brushes just to speed up that process a little more. If you're not in the mood for painting fruit, you could also use my florals painting brushes that have pre-made stamps of a variety of different leaves and you can achieve that same effect. And of course, if you don't have any of my brushes or don't want to get them, that it's totally fine as well. You can totally use any of your own brushes as well. The technique remains exactly the same. I'm going to start by creating a watercolor background with the watercolor paper grainy brush and the black color. The color palette I'm using today is my IPL 2024 color palette and you can get this for free from my website. And so now we're just going to paint in the background to create this really nice texture. Open up the layers panel and then set the blend mode to multiply. And now we're going to create a few extra layers, but we're going to move these layers below our multiply layer. Next up, we are going to pick one of our fruit stems, and I think the apple will work really well. So we can create the apple shape like this. And in order to color in the apple, I'm going to show you quite a nice trick. You want to tap on the layer thumbnail with the apple and then choose reference. So that makes this layer a reference layer, which means the layers above will recognize that this is a reference layer and stick to the bounds that have been created. And so now with the empty layer selected, we are going to fill this shape. You can choose any color that you like for your apple and I'm going to choose this bright yellow here. And then for the leaf, I'm going to choose green. And then for the little stalk here, I'm going to choose this brownish color. And so now we can turn our reference layer off and we've just got that color layer here. And the next thing we want to do is add some color to our apple. And in order to do that, we are going to tap on the apple thumbnail, tap on select, and then we are going to paint the color scene on another new layer like this. And because we've got the selection active, it means that we are only going to paint on the colors that are already there. And so now, of course, you can choose any color to paint your apple. The brush that I'm going to use here is the watercolor accents brush from the same brush set. And so now you can add in some color here. And you'll see now that I can't paint anywhere but the apple, which is really nice. Next up, we're going to smudge these colors together. And for that, I'm going to use the watercolor blend brush. And this is a really nice blending brush. And I really like to use it with this tapping motion. It creates a really nice irregular blend and represents the watercolors nicely. So now we're gonna add another layer above our coloring layer and still leave the selection on. And now we're going to create some shadows. And in order to do that, we're going to change the blend mode to overlay. And then we are going to select a black color for this. And I'm going to paint with the same watercolor accents here as well. I'm just gonna add some shadows here around the edges of my apple. And then also here at the bottom and on the other side. And again, I'm just painting in these shadows quite roughly. And then I'm going to switch to the smudge tool again and the watercolor blend brush. And then I'm going to smudge these shadows together like this. And this is looking nice. And so now we just need to create a little highlight here as well. So I'm going to create another new layer, choose white, and then paint in a bit of a highlight here at the top for my apple. And again, smudge it out to blend it in with the apple to create a nice little highlight like this. And then it would also be nice to add some colors to the leaf here. So maybe at the top here, you could add some lighter colors. And then towards the bottom, we could choose a darker color. And this makes it look quite nice. And we are going to blend these colors as well. 
And this is our apple done. I'm going to group all the apple layers together now. And then I'm going to move the apple group up here so that it's not in the way. And we can paint our next fruit. So I'm going to follow the exact same process. I'm going to choose my shape. And this time I'm going to choose the pear. And with black, I'm just creating the outline here. The next step is to set this layer as a reference layer. And now you can see that I've changed this to the reference layer, that the reference has been removed from this layer, which is exactly what we want. And then make sure that you add a new layer above your reference layer, and then you can fill the shape. And then for the pear, I'm going to choose this green color and I'm going to fill it in. And then for the stalk again, I'm going to use the brown color. And then we don't need the reference anymore, so we can turn it off. Next step is to create the selection for your pair. And now we can start painting. I'm going to speed this up a little bit because the process is exactly the same as it was for the apple. And here is our pear done. And so now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to group all our pear layers together. And now we can move the whole group to the side here. And then we're going to create another new layer, choose the black color. And this time we are going to paint a mango. And this is exactly the same process again. We're going to set this as the reference layer, create the new layer. And then we're going to fill this layer. Maybe with orange, that's a nice color for the mango. And then we can color in that leaf here as well. And you've seen now that is colored my whole page. And if this is happening to you, you need to adjust that color threshold. So we're going to undo this and we're going to try this again. Hold it here and then you want to drag your apple pencil to the left until only the shape that you want is filled. And then you can continue to fill the rest as well. And now we're going to color this in. I also want to paint in an extra leaf which will be really handy to fill some gaps that we might find and you might like to choose this lemon leaf here and if you wanted to you could also duplicate this leaf and color it in ever so slightly differently for a little bit more variation so I'm going to do that now I'm going to copy this leaf and then create selection and now color in the second leaf a little bit differently to the first one and so now it's time to assemble our pattern and I'm going to show you a really cool trick for this. You want to create a new layer and then you want to fill this layer. It doesn't matter which color you choose. Any color that you've currently selected is fine. So you tap on the layer thumbnail and then tap on fill layer. And so now what we're going to do is create a diamond shape out of this. So we're going to use the arrow tool and then we're going to turn on snapping. Make sure that snapping is turned on but you want to leave magnetics turned off just like that. And then select the uniform selection and now we are going to rotate the shape by 45 degrees. Now you can drag the handles to the edge of your square canvas like this to create the perfect diamond shape and you want to make sure that each handle snaps to the edge like it's done here. And then we're going to unselect it and we're going to reduce the opacity a little bit. This is just as a guide to know where we're going to place the elements. And so now the next step is to assemble our fruit and our leaves in a way that they all fit into this diamond shape. This is really important. This is really going to help us assemble the pattern later on. And it doesn't really matter which element you start with, but I recommend starting with the trickier shapes first and then use the simpler shapes to fill the gaps. I always like to align my elements around the edges of the diamond shape first. You want to get as close to the edge as possible to avoid big gaps in your pattern later on. I'm going to hide these leaves for now so it's easier to see. So now we can duplicate some of these elements. And you might have noticed that I've still got these groups with all the coloring layers. If that bothers you, you might choose to flatten the layers at this stage. If you don't flatten the layers, it means you can go back and you can change the colors. If you ever so slightly wanted to change the coloring of your different fruit elements, but that's totally up to you. So now, for example, if I didn't want these two apples to look exactly the same, I could select one of these layers. I could go to hue, saturation and brightness and ever so slightly move the color and make it a little bit warmer. I could make it a bit darker as well if I wanted to. 
increase the saturation so you can ever so slightly change it of course you could also go in with your smudging tool and smudge the colors around or even start from scratch and coloring the apple completely different that's completely up to you all right so i like this so i'm actually going to flatten this now as well next up is our pear i want to make a copy of this and flatten it and then we can move this and create a smaller pear look nice here and i also want to slightly change the colors of this and then i'm going to make a copy of the mango as well let's find a nice place for our mango here sometimes you will need to try a few different locations to see what works best and you might also like to try flipping your elements horizontally or vertically it's a little bit like playing tetris and now you can see that we have quite a few gaps but this is where our leaves come in handy now so i'm going to turn the visibility of these on again and then we can move them into the gaps to create a nicer composition. And at this stage, you want to make sure that all the edges are covered as much as possible. If there's a little bit of a gap in the middle, it doesn't matter so much. We can rearrange some of the shapes, but definitely make sure that the edges of your shape are nicely filled like this. All right, and now comes the fun part. Now we're going to create the repeating pattern. So now what we're going to do is group all these layers together that have the fruit on them. And then we're going to add a new layer inside of our grouped fruit elements and fill it with any color. It doesn't matter which color because we're going to turn the visibility off. We are only doing this so that the group keeps its square shape in order to place the elements precisely as you will see in a minute. Then we're going to duplicate this whole group four times. So in the end you will have five groups with your fruit elements. And now comes the most important part of this whole tutorial. So the next step is really really important and you need to be very precise when you're doing this. We are now going to select each of these group and we're going to move them into each corner of our canvas so you select the group select the arrow tool and now you need to turn snapping back on if you have turned it off before so you only want snapping on you don't want magnetics and now we're going to drag the square into each of the four quadrants and we're going to let it snap into the corner of our canvas you need to make sure that you can see the yellow lines this is super super important if you don't do this the pattern is not going to match and then you'll have a really hard time creating a repeating pattern so definitely make sure that the lines snap into place before you move on to your next group so now we're going to repeat the same process with all of our four groups and we're going to move them into each corner of our canvas and again really making sure that you can see those yellow lines and you want to make sure that you see both the horizontal and the vertical all right looking good so we're going to do the next one and we're going to move it down here and then we're also going to do it with that fourth one so now we don't need our diamond shape anymore so i can turn this off and so now we have a basic look of our repeating pattern so the next step is to move the elements in the middle around a little bit just to even out the pattern you can also make some color changes if you want it to now and the important part is that you're only working with the elements in the middle all the elements that we've placed on the outside you shouldn't touch anymore because then it will interfere with your repeating pattern so now at this stage you can merge all of these layers together and so now you see that we've got this border and this is what creates the edges of our repeating pattern and then in the inside we still have our original shape and we've still got the individual elements which we can now move around to create an even nicer pattern and you'll also see now that we've created the full pattern it's a lot more noticeable that sometimes two elements that we didn't think were going to be next to each other are in fact next to each other but because we still have all our fruit pieces on separate layers, it's quite easy to rearrange them. And of course, you can also add additional pieces for an even more cohesive look. And then once you're happy with your pattern, it's time to try it out. So now we're going to move our outside layer here into our layer group. And then we are going to duplicate this four times again. And again, you want to make sure that you have your fully filled square here as well, just to make sure that it keeps the border intact. We've now got five layer groups, but we don't actually need the bottom one. I just keep this as a spear just in case something goes wrong and I need to go back. And now comes the moment of truth. And now we're going to test out if this is in fact a repeating pattern. And in order to do that, you use the arrow key. Make sure that you still got snapping turned on, but not magnetics. And now we're going to grab the handle of each corner and then put it into each of the corners quadrants of our canvas and this is always the most fun part but it can be a little bit nerve-wracking because you just never know there might have been a little mistake and then it doesn't actually match up but 
if we're lucky and if we have done it properly then you should be able to see your repeating pattern right now and just like that you've created a repeating pattern in procreate that's ready to conquer the world remember that the skills you've learned today are just the beginning your creativity is the only limit if you love transforming your art today give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more creative adventures drop a comment below with your pattern creations or any questions you have happy creating and i see you in the next video